puppy up here. So this is episode two. Take one. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Malcolm. <laughs> I'm Colin. You could, you might know me as MJ. You may know him as MJ. You might know him as Ma Maniac. This is going to be episode two of our Try Before You Die yeah. whiskey tasting. Right, which yeah, we were going to go with a script, but you know, we're done with that. Um, really, the idea was is that we have about 300 bottles of uh, unopened whiskey in this place, and um, we'd like to see what they taste like, and we'd like you to have that experience with us. And so this is the idea behind Try Before You Die. Where are we? This is really a private residence, and it just happens to be that I know the owner of the private residence. So all the stuff that's in here is just basically freaking stuff that he has bought on his travels, and some of us have added to. Uh, and we're going to enjoy doing this once a month. Isn't that what we've yeah, been We about? may do more than no. once a month. You know, it's really, really not giving me too up. much credit here. Really, this, this whiskey collection has really come from, you know, many people's pockets. And, uh, of course, here we are at a private whiskey bar in the European tradition and uh, in scenic southwestern New Hampshire. And, um, you know, essentially the idea is, is that we're going to open bottles uh, through a random number generator. So we have no idea what we're opening. Some of these bottles we've tried before. Um, some we've never had. Some are commonly available at the liquor store, even in New Hampshire, which is, you know, a pretty crummy selection. Uh, sorry, New Hampshire. Um, and some are actually not in production anymore and um, uh, pretty darn rare. There is only one bottle not available in this uh, process, and that is a 1948 White Horse. Um, and we'll have to see when and if that ever gets opened. But other than that, every bottle is available. So basically, we're going to take you through what we think about these bottles as we open them. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be here for many, many years, and I've seen this, this collection grow. And uh, we have looked at each other a couple of times and said, you know what, we are going to die. And what's the point of having all this scotch here if we're not going to try it? So we have now devised this way of contributing to the world and saying, hey, look, this is what we're going to do on a monthly basis, or as he knows, maybe like weekly basis. And we're going to try to get through 300 bottles yeah. before we die. That's exciting, isn't it? You know, we may even get more bottles added to the mix. Which um, is something that someone brought up to me. Says, what happens if we get more bottles to the mix? Yeah, well, we keep drinking, I guess. That's the idea. Um, so, essentially, it really is a random number generator. I've got one loaded on my phone right over here to the left. I'm about to pull it out, and we're going to pick a number. Or the phone is going to pick a number, and we're going to find out if there's a bottle uh, that we're familiar with or we're unfamiliar with or that uh, we already know we don't like. or you know. But you're going to experience our honest reaction to that bottle whether it's good or crap it's true right there's a game called factor crap right well here we are this is gonna be good or crap so I think you should spin up your phone all right, and, uh, let's get right over. so here's the number from the uh, the previous episode which was bottle 262 and so, if you remember from our bonus episode there was a bottle that we just put on the table that we started drinking because mm. of course it was burns night excellent Smithers all go right. ahead and spin this up. all right here we go I'm not spinning anything but I am gonna touch it Two forty-four. Where does that put us in this? Well, way? let's see. So, we are seventy-five behind us. We are at ninety-eight above us. We are at one forty-four in front of us. We are at one ninety-eight opposite side. We are at two twenty-two around the corner. Two forty-four is in the snooker room. And how did All you right. come up with those numbers? Well, top left to right. Top to bottom, through the bar, in a whatever direction that way is. And here we are moving into the snooker room. 244, so we were at 222. Oh, we have the piano. 1, 2, 3, 6, 28, 30, 36, plus 4 is 40, 43. <gasps> Oh, this is exciting, everybody. This is super exciting. This is a bottle I am not familiar with. Um, this is hard to come by. And in fact, this bottle is so coveted that the distillery actually had to release a second batch because it was so sought after. So we're actually going to be opening the, uh, the Glenfiddich Winter Storm 21-year-old ice wine cask finish. Um, you are lucky if you are able even to find one of these. Um, and I am super excited to see what it tastes like because um, they, they, the demand was so high, they had to release a second batch. So this is exciting. This is exciting. Yeah, I know it, brother. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
All right. I so, love the fact, and again, I, I hope the people at home can see this. We're not kidding. This is just the way the cookie crumbled tonight. It is the way. And I'm going to say, Colin's managed to put together a couple books here. We're going to go through them every time we go into it and see if we can find some facts that have been written down. Uh, so I'm going to test these out. Now I'm going to stop you right there, man. All right. All right. You're not going to find this anymore. Really? This You're is not. the number one. So Glenn Fittick has gone through this process over the last couple of years. Um, and behind me is the Glenn Fittick shelf. And Glenn Fittick has gone through this process of doing some special releases. They've done a pale ale cask release. They've done a 20 different cask release. Uh, of course, the winter storm, uh, but we end up, we actually have uh, a couple of different releases because they did two releases of this, hard to come by. And um, they did the fire and cane release. Um, and they, of course, they've just come out with a new one. Oh boy, oh, 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 it's the crew, the crew's creme brulee. But that's not really what it is. But they have a new one, but we don't have it yet. But this is not in a book, Malcolm. So, last week, or last episode, we did Burns. Yep. This week we're doing Winter Storm. Yep. Now, we had said we were going to tell a story about this. Have you ever been to this distillery? I've been to Scotland. Oh, okay, so you've been to Scotland, but you haven't been to this. I have not been to Glenfiddich. All right, well, let's just open this box up carefully. Well, I'm going to just quickly, because we know it's not in a book, let's see if these old eyes, soft, sweet notes. Oh, boy, this is hard. This is hard. I, I see the word fruit, mm, mouth-watering. Fusion of sweet flavors it is met with a rich, drying sensation from the ice wine. So we're going to have to take those words in that half a sentence, open this bottle, and see what sentences we put together. All what right. do we think of it? All what right. are we saying again? Is this good or crap? This could be good or crap. All right. Well, look at this, everybody. They have really put together a package here at Glenfiddich. They've got some foam up top. Let's see if that pulls right out. It does, or I just broke it. Um, that's really set in there. There's some foam at the bottom. Oh, there's a receipt, but we shouldn't pay any attention to that because uh, we don't care about money. We don't care about that. that. Here it is. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. And, oh, no, and the backside open. Is, and the backside really open. Oh, yeah. the packaging from Glenfiddich. Well, that's a sharp looking bottle. I'm going to have to say that. This is a 21-year-old. 43% alcohol. Yep, so this, again, you know, is going to have been bottled with the intention of enjoying it neat initially. It's not a cask strength. Um, 21 years they let this sit in ice wine casks. Uh, lusciously sweet. Experimental series number three. So I know uh, there are probably a lot of you out there are going to be starting to wonder, you know, this is scotch and uh, this is what, what we're doing and uh, maybe wondering where these are from in the world. And I know there's a... Scotland. <laughs> I know there's several regions that these bottles come from. By any chance, could you tell us where, what part of Scotland this is coming mm -hmm. from? Glenfiddich is a space side. It's a space side, so it's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I really hope I got that right. I'm just gonna pop this cork. <laughs> All right, you do that. Oof. Oh, it, 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 it settled. <laughs> it's it not, settled. It's not a screw on. It had settled, but I'm going to screw it out. Ready? Here it comes. Open your ears, Malcolm. Oh, love that sound. Love that sound. Oh. And this Lush, is going to be interesting. Lusciously sweet is this what is you're going to be interesting because we have no idea what it looks like. So this is a this is a ceramic. This is like a ceramic bottle. I guess it's going to be a light color. Winter storm. Ice wine. Dry finish. Lusciously sweet. There you go, my friend. Cheers. Cheers. Bottle number three. It would be funny if we didn't have anything to say. So our friend Felix is a big, big Glenfiddich fan. And, and one of the, um, the criticisms of Glenfiddich would, might be, in general, that their offerings often have very similar tastes, especially at that low-end range of the 12-year-olds, right? Very predictable. What's neat about this for me is I can automatically tell this has been aged in a different kind of cask. Um, very dry on the front for me. 
Um, hmm, I'm trying to describe what happens as it rounds over into the back of my throat. Do you have any thoughts? I think the way you're gonna way you're gonna talk about this is in true Glenfiddich. Is it has a very even taste right mm -hmm. across. It starts off very dry, but then you get that fruity taste for the rest of the fruit sip. And at the very end, you get a little bit of heat. Nothing yeah. too much, nothing too heavy, just yeah. enough to make sure that you know it's there. You know, I, I think maybe we're saying it's easy to understand why Glenfiddich had to release a second batch of this 21-year-old uh, whiskey. And by the way, if you don't know, they don't give away 21-year-old whiskey. 21-year-old right? whiskey actually uh, costs a little bit. And for them to have to release a second batch, can, please, mate. The second batch means that this has been well received um, by the whiskey drinking um, population. I, I'm not struggling with this at all. I find it pretty easy. It's interesting. I'm not an ice wine man, I'm not an ice wine connoisseur expert. I, I, I don't really know much about it, but I can tell you that it's this is <coughs> this is dry. Quite frankly, if you're going to put it to to the way we're going to produce this and have this freaking go across to our, our our people that watch this, you really don't taste the ice wine. It's the dryness is the dryness is what I'm, is what to I'm say, associating. But to say ice wine, you know, is it a wine? Well, no, it's not a wine, but it was in an ice wine cask. All right. Yeah. But do you really say, hey, look, no. is it ice wine? Could you tell this was ice wine? I don't know, because I don't know anything about ice wine. All right. But I do know that this is pretty good. I'll give it that. That it is. Yeah. And with a piece of ice in it? Yeah. <gasps> Very tasty. You know what this was in? Ice, ice wine. <laughs> <laughs> The ice cube definitely makes it. I think on this one, specifically, yeah, yeah, I I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Sometimes I, I have said I would prefer it without the ice. I think I do like this one with the cube. I think the, what the ice cube does for this is now it, it makes it a very, very even drink, mm -hmm. where you don't have to worry about what you're going to get. Yep. You know, you're going to get it from the very start to the very end. And I appreciated what you said about Glenfiddich being even and predictable. I mean, and this is really a nice variation of that evenness. Well, I think. Um, as we had said, there's a lot of people out there who go out to liquor stores and buy scotch. Yep. I think what we need to do is make sure that people go out there and have some sort of understanding of what they might be right. getting themselves into, as well be. as enjoying ourselves. Well, obviously. well, here's the thing, right? If you're going to buy a 21 year old whiskey, you know, um, it would hate, you know, it'd be a bummer for it to be a dud. Correct. Yeah. So my question to you is: Is, is this going to be something we're going to open up to our friends out here? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we've been having this conversation about twenty-one-year-olds, and they don't give them away. But I think we should give some away to our friends. You guys want some? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's yeah. do this. All right, come around, gents. I really do like it with the ice. I do. I yeah. think this is one that I will say, "Hey, look, this is better with ice." Mm -hmm. All right, the Glenfiddich twenty-one-year-old winter storm. And just to put it out there, it's not sacrilege to put ice in a, a scotch. You drink it the way you enjoy it. Yeah. There goes Aaron, who I happen to know is a Glenfiddich fan. Yes. Here comes Mr. Uh, Mr. Kevin Lemming. Yes. He's just, a, he's just a drinker of scotch. He's a scotch man. Here comes G-Man. Excellent, sir. Mr. Peter Yoder. And he has no idea what he's talking about. No, that guy. I don't know. Somebody, he probably rode up here with somebody. Um, all right, we're going we're gonna to cork it. And uh, to our friends... Cheers. 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 To our viewers, Skull. Skull.